I've been looking forward to this video for a long, long time and spent a lot of nights thinking about a quirky way to intro into what this video is really about. Then it hit me. These computers are actually the opposite of that. Besides the super awesome C9 engraving on the front panel, these machines are not meant to be flashy at all. They aren't meant to wow the visitors we have into the studio with flashy RGB lights and tempered glass side panels. These computers are strictly business, and that's why they open up a whole new realm of possibilities not only for our workflow, but for our company as a whole. Back when I was young and naive, before I had to edit any footage larger than 1080p 8-bit, my train of thought when it came to editing rigs was, if it looks pretty and can play Skyrim on ultra settings, it has to be able to edit any footage you throw at it, right? While these rigs are excellent for most 4K timelines and most games, they really start to show weaknesses when you throw 8K red helium footage and even 6K Komodo footage at them without making any proxies. Some of our old videos highlight the pitfalls of our older machines and we really had no choice but to live with it at the time. Now, you may be thinking, why should I even listen to this guy? Does he even know what he's talking about? And the short answer to that is sometimes. The long answer is I've been editing videos for a little over six years and building PCs for around 10 years. And I've always found myself cutting corners when it came to the PC hardware and specking my PC out. I mean, my first editing computer was a Dell and Spron Mini my grandma got me for Christmas for Skype and homework. So it doesn't really get lower than that. This is really the first time in my life I've been able to say we have no budget. Just go out and buy the best computer money can buy. With our collective tech experience here at Clockwork 9, we found that building computers, while fun, can be troublesome, as if something goes wrong, you end up spending all night scrolling through Reddit forums looking for people with your same exact issues. We weren't willing to take that chance this time and decided on looking at pre-built workstations instead. Now, before you roast us in the comments, hear me out. We were just sick of compromising and spending our own time looking for answers. Gone are the days when we can experiment with our builds and toss caution out in the wind by hoping for the best with our builds. Our livelihoods depend on our workstations now, and the last thing you want with a deadline looming is to make sacrifices in both time and energy by wasting hours troubleshooting why a particular error is popping up. And some driver isn't playing nicely with a piece of hardware because of some unknown incompatibility with another. We love staying on the cutting edge of knowledge with computers. It's fun and enriching to see all the research and hard work result in a computer that is entirely the result of your own blood, sweat, and tears. But with our work getting more intense, clients demanding results, and all of our creative bandwidth to think about, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to dedicate so much effort and time when you can offload that kind of workload onto another source who is wholly committed to researching, building, and perfecting exactly what we need. On top of all that, we're a small company of just seven people working full time and wear a lot of hats as you often do in small businesses. Dedicating the time and resources to building a set of PCs and keeping them on track just doesn't work as well as it may have just a few years ago. Another big factor in us deciding to go pre-built are the ongoing supply chain issues, which we all know are happening. Picking up high-end components isn't as carefree as it was prior to 2020. Between shortages and the wait time involving just ordering basic things, our feeling was that the distributors of these pre-built PCs will have volume priority and get at least close to MSRP on many of the parts. High-end pre-built workstations are always gonna be a little bit more on the pricey side, no matter where you look. But we wanted that added security that if something does go wrong, we can call up the company that built the computers instead of scouring Reddit for answers from random people. This is why it's so important to do your research and select not only a proven company, but a company that isn't too corporate, that'll just throw your concerns in a bin with thousands of others. And this is when we found Puget Systems. Not only is Puget a proven and legit leader in the world of workstation building, but they patiently walked us through the process and had a huge amount of benchmarking to back up their choices. There's a very good reason their benchmarks are the gold standard for YouTuber viewers and vloggers when it comes to both video and 3D work. After much back and forth discussion, we ended up ordering two absolute beasts from them, each fitted with an AMD Threadripper Pro 3975WX processor, 256 gigabytes of RAM, two RTX 3090s each, a one terabyte Samsung 980 Pro NVMe boot drive, 
and a two terabyte cache drive with an Intel X520 SPF plus network card and absolutely no shortcuts taken. These systems were essentially designed to be our primary editing workstations and render and playback anything we throw at them. So your next question might be, Patrick, I'm just a freelance videographer and editor. This is extreme overkill for me. Why are you even making this video? And my answer to that would be yes, in most instances, this is complete overkill. But we're not building gaming computers here. And we're always on the lookout to squeeze more speed and reliability anywhere we can get into our workflow. Our business thrives on speed and having a flexible post-production workflow. Rather than waiting for proxies to render or grabbing lunch while rendering out a big project, it's always going to be preferable to dedicate as much creative potential to our work and not have to be stalled by a laggy interface or extended wait times on our renders. We invested a lot of time and money into our collaborative post-production infrastructure and any bottleneck must be fixed. In the long run, the cost of the machine will pay itself back much sooner than in a non-professional environment and ultimately these machines are made to help us work better and faster. While on the topic of better and faster, we ran a quick test using Adobe After Effects' new multi-thread rendering algorithm. Even though we ran some After Effects tests just now, our primary way to collaborate on video work is through DaVinci Resolve. And Resolve can take any hardware you throw at it. Using one of these computers in Resolve is nimble, agile, and quite frankly, very smooth. Everything happens blindingly fast and in real time. It's a bit like stepping into the future where the only thing slowing you down and you're interfacing with the computer is yourself and how quickly you can think. The speed on paper is great, but the question now is, how is a $15,000 computer more cost efficient than say a $2,000 computer? Let's factor in routine tasks we need to do on a daily basis. Exporting, rendering, and playback and editing without any hiccups to enable a more efficient process. All of that really adds up. Anything that you can drop in your workflow that can cut out 10 to 20% of your time overall is not only fiscally responsible in our case, but also has the added benefit of slashing away many hurdles in the process. So we end up creating a less stressful environment to work in while leveraging that flexibility into a workflow with more room for critical thinking and thought in general. After all, creating work in any medium is not simply about the end product, but the journey to the end product and how enriching it is on a personal level to be able to effortlessly follow different lines of thought at a moment's notice without something like After Effects playback getting so bogged down that you lose time just waiting. Now, is a system like this for everyone? No. But looking toward the future of filmmaking and even the future of your company, I don't see why you'd ever want to settle for anything less, especially if you have the option. There are plenty of benchmarking videos on YouTube. There are also plenty of PC build videos on YouTube. But what I want all of you to really take away from this is that investing in yourself and your business is one of the most important keys to success. If you told a Patrick 10 years ago that he'd be working at a creative agency using his mind to make videos with the best equipment available at the time, he would think you're on hard drugs. If I never spent that $400 on my first camera, I wouldn't be here at all. So am I saying you should drop 15K on a PC right now? No. I'm not here to sell you on buying a system like we did. As with anything in life, it comes down to how you value your time and what kind of time you want to have. For us, time is almost more valuable than anything else. Saving hours a day not only adds up, but it's a difference between work just being completed faster and work completed both faster and with extra attention to the details that might have otherwise been sacrificed due to time constraints and hardware compromises causing undue stress and tension. Time doesn't always mean money. For us, time is an exploration of ideas and knowing we have the room to explore those ideas and concepts. We just really enjoy not having to wait. So if you enjoyed this video and like our new PCs, don't forget to like and comment down below and we'll see you in the next video. Oh man, that was rough. <laughs>